Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. I'm on a new city today. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ah, so uh, first video I've got for the new city uh, is I've got four Chardonnays. Uh, two from South Africa, two from uh, California, and uh, each pair is from the same producer. So uh, without further ado, let's just dig in. The first pair is from Seven Springs, which I think was all the previous city had left. But anyway, no matter about that. Uh, so Seven Springs, pretty new vineyard. I think they had their uh, new their first vintage 2010. Uh, they're down in the Overberg region of South Africa. Overberg's like a uh, an all-encompassing region that takes in places like El Elgin, Elim, uh, Hermanus, Stroke, Walker Bay, or whatever you want to call it, Agullas. Um, not sure whereabouts in Overberg this is from, but um, it's their, their unoaked Chardonnay and a 2011 vintage. Let us give it a whirl. Now, one of the problems with unoaked Chardonnay is that um, some people have just thought, oh, we'll just take our net regular Chardonnay and not put it in a barrel. Uh, it works if your fruit is nice, lean, line, and has high, live and has high cheekbones. If it's a big, fat and blobly, blobby, uh, it does need something, well, Jilly, Jilly Goulden called it a bra of oak to support it. This one, I think they've done absolutely right in doing it in an unoaked style, because it's got a zesty, crisp freshness. Um, I had, a, I don't remember where it was from the other, I think it was an English Chardonnay all thing, and I said Chablis, um, freshness, uh, Macon fruit. Uh, so, um... It's funny, I mean, they were in a slightly uh, warmer and drier place than England here, but I get much that same type of character. Almost a flinty character, um, um, that, that, that shabbly like a backbone, and then this uh, zesty uh, citrus and a bit of a richer peach pear fruit. It smells good. Not quite as crisp as the English one was, but... Um, it's not overblown. It's gentle. It's uh, there's got it has got this crispness to it. Um, uh, it feels like they've done a little bit of um, aging on the lees to give it some nuttiness, but they haven't done too much stirring, which would give it almost like a little bit too much fatness. So the finish I'm left with uh, has this crispness, but this nice breadth of flavour, a breadiness, um, and this 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 this, this punchy fruit. I, I do like that. Um, next one is there, 2010, um, doesn't say wooded or oaked Chardonnay, it just says Chardonnay. Uh, but what it does say, it doesn't say anything about the wood on the front, but on the back it says uh, blah, blah, no exposure to new oak. So in other words, it's uh, uh, they've got some barrels that have been used once or maybe even more often than once. And uh, uh, it, it, what happens in the first year of a barrel, a lot of the flavours leach into the wine. Maybe 70% of the flavours you're going to get from a barrel leach into there. And then over the next uh, two, three, four years, however long you want to use it, uh, a little less and less uh, eeks out, uh, oozes out each year. But you still get what I call the élevage type of flavours, the softening, the rounding out, the transformation from uh, gawky adolescent to grown up uh, and... Um, yeah, grown-up, mature adult. Or am I talking rubbish? Let's try it. Again, very nicely um, poised wine. Um, it, it does feel to have got an extra layer of honeyed richness. Maybe there is some toasty uh, character, but it's way, way back in, in the background. Uh, here, the fruit, fruit, it almost feels a bit more zesty and citrus-like than the first one. Uh, if the first one was more on that uh, just ripe peach. Yeah, here it's got maybe a little bit of green apple. Um, and uh, again, the precision is the word I, I use for it. And then when you come to taste it, that's when that fatter edge emerges. But it's, um, yeah, so the, it's more, it's got a little bit of that tropical fruit character in there. Not too much of it. Again, the citrus is there, keeping it fresh. But just verging on that pineapple chunk, um, a tinned peach character. Uh, I'm really not sure which of those I prefer. I can think of occasions where I'd like each of them. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, I, I do like them both. Well done, Seven Springs. Let's see whether Marimar Torres, um, how, how her wines can compare with these. So I've got two wines from her. She's in the Sonoma uh, Valley in, um, in California. And I, are they both Russian River? Uh, yeah, they're both Russian River Valley. Uh, Marimar Estate. Uh, this is La Masia Don Miguel. Uh, sorry, La Masia. Uh, Don Miguel Vineyard. And it's 2009 Vintage. I don't know how to say this without um, incriminating myself, but uh, there's an aroma here that reminds me of, uh, shall we say, um, a reggae club. Um, uh, and yes, there's this strand, herby, smoky character coming through. And uh, yeah, there's a nice peachy fruit there. And it's a, it's a mixture of uh, quite ripe peach 
uh, but uh, and certainly fresh ripe peach and then that's quite uh, you know when you get those nectarines that you bite into and there's just that there's still quite a lot of give and you think mmm you know, I'll leave it a bit longer in the fruit bowl but the flavour's nice it's a mix of the two but with the smoky overlay and compared with the um, um, with the Seven Springs wine this is a much richer fuller style much more uh, buxom, full, fleshy, uh, there's a creaminess, there's this um, that vanilla fudge uh, character coming in, in and out. Um, I miss a little bit of the perky freshness that was in, in the first two, so as I like the attack, the finish I'm left with is just a little bit uh, sweet, confected, so I've got that vanilla, I've got that fudge, I've got that, yeah, the little bit of that tinned peach juice and, um, uh, and fruit cocktail syrup in there. Uh, so like it but uh, I like to like it more. My favourite Chardonnay from these guys, which I don't, I don't have today, uh, they do one called Acero, A-C-E-R-O, uh, which is unoaked and um, maybe maybe that's just a style I prefer but um, uh, I know there's lots of people who like this. Let's try the wine number two from them which is um, Dobles Lias. Um, so double, uh, twice, two lots of ageing on the lees, uh, extended lees contact and then um, um, ageing on the lees in the barrel, 2007 vintage from the same vineyard. So I'm not sure whether that is a La Masia, the first one is a particular block of fruit, um, but uh, I'll see if I can find it. I'll, I'll tell you what, you just have a look on the website where I, uh, I always post the links to uh, information sheets about the wines. You can find out for yourself. And this is big, buttery, rich, uh, but simple. And uh, yes, I, I miss, I, I, again, I miss that bit of tension that is in uh, the, my, my favourite Chardonnay. It, 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 it feels just, yeah, just like big, rounded, and it has got a, a, a little nuttiness. It's got this warm, round, rich, peachy fruit aroma. Um, but uh, it doesn't smell like it's going to have um, uh, too many um, your cerebral characteristics. But let's have a see. It's got the creaminess of the oak aging, it's got the nuttiness from the uh, extended lees contact, but I miss the precision of the fruit. I don't notice any, any mineral character, any, any tang coming through. I don't notice a sense of the soil in the way that I noticed uh, it coming through in, in, in the two Seven Springs wines. So um, on this showing, uh, Seven Springs, uh, two uh, Marimar Torres, nil, but um, as I say, I like their Acero. Acero, I'm my Spanish pronunciation. I'll tell you what, I'll go away and work on it, and I'll see you soon.